pandemic, Telangana social welfare institutions are busy celebrating the joy of learning. Thanks to our Honorable Secretary Dr. R. S. Praveen Kumar, for Jnana Diksha is his brainchild. And I am so glad to be connected with you all through this platform. Let me thank TSAT TV for the courtesy. I am Jet Sheila Shravanti from DSWRDC Kamam. I have been, Engli been teaching English to undergraduates for about 15 years now and I am here before you to present a session on group discussion. Well, before we get into the topic, let us start from something we already know. Man has always used conversations and discussions as ways to communicate. When does a conversation become a discussion? When two or more people talk about a particular issue or topic in detail, exploring its various dimensions and exchanging ideas intelligently, we say they are discussing it, right? Now if I ask you, have you ever participated in a group discussion? Some of you might say yes and some of you might say no. But then I think all of you might have participated in a group discussion at some point of your life. Let me give you an example. You might have sat around with your friends in your classroom, planning about a picnic that you all wanted to go to in the weekend. Now, where to go, how to go, who all will go, there's so much to discuss, right? This is nothing but an informal group discussion. This is nothing but an informal group discussion. In today's presentation, you will know about a formal group discussion, by the end of the session, you will know the components of a group discussion, the do's and don'ts of a group discussion, and more importantly, you will know the tips you need to crack a group discussion. So, what is group discussion? Group discussion, as the term suggests, is nothing but a group of people discussing a topic or a situation. In a formal group discussion, 8 to 12 people are formed into a group and they are given a topic or a situation to discuss. A panel observes the proceedings and evaluates the performance of the group members. Group discussion is popularly known as GD. In recent times, it is widely used as a tool to assess a candidate's personality. Now let's see why is it prescribed to undergraduates. Group discussion is now being increasingly used by universities and B schools in the admission process. You need to know about a group discussion to get a PG seat. Many universities and institutions like Tata Institute of Social Sciences, IIMs, Banaras Hindu University, Delhi University are using group discussion in the admission process. Secondly, group discussion is part of pre-interview test in the recruitment process. If you go out in search of employment, you will find 7 out of 10 top-notch companies using group discussion to select candidates. Thirdly, group discussion is used as a tool by organization for solving problems, resolving issues, and making better decisions. Sooner or later, you will find yourself participating in a group discussion, either to get a postgraduate admission or for your job, or even after you get into your job at your workplace. So you better know how to do it. To be able to participate in a group discussion, you should first know how a group discussion is conducted. As I said earlier, 8 to 10 students are taken as a group. Of course, this number may vary in some cases. These candidates are made to sit in a circular or rectangular arrangement with or without a table. A topic or a situation is then given to them to discuss. Usually, about 2 to 3 minutes of preparation time is given Preparation time is given so that uh, before the GD begins, so that they participate in the GD. 
Now, a panel observes the performance of the group members and evaluates the performance. Believe me, these experts observe every detail as long as you're on the GD. Now, GD lasts for 10 to 15 minutes. The time also varies depending upon the number of participants and their participation levels. Finally, you would be asked to conclude the GD as the set time for the group discussion is over. Now that you know the process of a group discussion, let me introduce to you the types of group discussion. Though there are many types of group discussion based on various criteria, I would like to put before you the types of group discussion based on the topic of group discussion. Based on the topics, group discussions are divided into two types, topic-based group discussions and case-based group discussions. Case-based group discussions are those where case studies are given to candidates to discuss in the group discussion. And topic-based group discussions are those where topic is given to the participants to discuss. Topic-based group discussions are further categorized into three types, factual topics, controversial topics, and abstract topics. To help you understand in detail what these topics are, let me elucidate with examples. Factual topics. Factual topics can be socio-economic topics. Now, these are given to test your general awareness. Examples, the education policy of India. You cannot participate well in these type of group discussion unless you have with you enough data, facts and figures about the topic. It requires a lot of reading and preparation. The second one is controversial topics. Controversial topics are argumentative in nature. They generate a controversy. In group discussion where these topics are given, usually the noise levels are high and the tempers can be flying. These type of co uh, topics are given to students to see how much maturity the candidates display by keeping their temper in check and also by presenting their point of argument without losing their, uh, without getting emotional or without being personal. When such topics are given, one needs to be very objective. Examples, women make better managers. Say in a group, five uh, participants are girls and five participants are boys. So girls tend to say that women make better managers and boys tend to say that uh, women do not make better managers. This is because they personalize it. You are not supposed to personalize the topic. If you personalize, you get emotional. And if you get emotional, you don't have any control on your temper. The third type of topic is abstract topics. These are about intangible things. The chance of getting these topics is very low, but you cannot rule out the possibility. These topics are given to test your creativity and your lateral thinking. A is an alphabet, twinkle, twinkle, little star, black is beautiful are some examples. When students are given these topics, they first go blank. What can we talk about the topic? But then, if you give and ponder upon the topic, you would have so much to talk. I have an exp experience of giving this topic to my students. Black is beautiful, and they came back with so many ideas. For somebody, black meant the Oscar, that is the black lady. For some, it meant corruption. For some, it meant pollution. For some, it meant all the Bollywood and Tollywood black beauties. So these are the types of group discussion you need to know. Moving on, I want to think if I am your teacher, I would give you a topic today and ask you to get back next Friday and participate in a group discussion. What would you do? You have seven days of preparation time. Most of you would say Google Mata Ki Jai, type the topic in the internet, and then try to get as much as information you can. I'm not against 
finding readily available information from the internet. But I also want you to think, GD is first a competition. If you're all using the same procedure to collect and gather ideas, how can one candidate have edge over other candidates in the group? Now today, I'm not going to touch upon how cleverly you can modify your search to find relevant information on internet, but I want to give you three methods that can help you generate relevant ideas for your group discussion. The first met method is CAR, Concept Analysis Response. Now, every topic has a concept behind it, a key idea or a key word. Let me give you an example. Should voting be made compulsory? What is the concept in this topic? Voting, right? Now, how can you go and search? Instead of si uh, searching in the internet saying, should voting be made compulsory? You can rather use it in different ways, taking the concept out. What is voting? Where is it used? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Give examples of countries which have poor voting. Is there an example of a country where voting is made compulsory? So this is how you can go about to find relevant ideas. The second method is concerned parties approach, that is CPA. Now, let me give you another example. Should teachers be assessed by students? When you look at the topic, you will find two parties. What are those parties? Teachers and students, right? When there are two parties, naturally, there would be two perspectives, right? So while participating or generating ideas for such GD, GD topics, you need to bring in both the perspectives, ideas related to both the perspectives. Now this is another approach. Third approach is multiple perspectives approach, MPA. Example, smaller states should be encouraged. I don't know if you remember before the separate state of Telangana is declared, uh, there was a report by Sri Krishna committee, a lengthy report submitted to central, whether to take a decision to declare Telangana or not. So many issues were included in it. The water resources in Telangana, higher education, politics, language, culture, so on and so forth. Right? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is, topics like this require a comprehensive view, a panoramic view, where you include multiple perspectives. So here I gave you three approaches where you can generate ideas in a very relevant way. How can you get a better score in a group discussion? What do you need to focus upon to get a better score? Here I give you the evaluation criteria of group discussion. The very first criteria that I'm talking about is knowledge. Knowledge is a prerequisite for participating in a group discussion. In a competitive group discussion, it is, uh, it is knowledge that is primarily tested. I've worked as an uh, assistant professor in an engineering college for about 15 years. And in my experience, I have seen candidates who could perform pretty well in group discussion conducted in the practice sessions of the college, at some times ended up failing in the group discussion conducted by companies, recruiting companies. Now this is not because they did not know how to participate in a group discussion, but this is because they, did, uh, they were given a topic of which they had no idea. You are in soup if you are clueless about the topic given. You're tongue-tied as long as the GD goes on. So what is the solution? It all falls back to your knowledge base. Tell me, where do ideas come from? Ideas come from already existing ideas. That is, your previous learning, your previous knowledge. Now, this is nothing but your knowledge base. Your knowledge base can be empty if you have read nothing apart from your syllabus. No magazines, no journals, no newspapers. Your knowledge base can be empty if you had a habit of by hearting stuff just to write your exams and not knowing the subject for learning it. What were you trying to do? 
you were pushing information into your short term memory and then it may not be there for long it vanishes in two or three months leaving your brain empty don't worry you can still improve your knowledge base by starting to nourish your brain with daily dose of listening and reading i also want you to stop giving your favorite excuse ma'am i have problem with english ma'am i'm from telugu medium background way back in 2007 i was conducting jam session in my communication lab and the principal of the college walked into the room he was unhappy with the performance of the students he called me into his cabin and asked me ma'am what is wrong we are taking so much care about the students and they are still struggling to speak in english for 1 minute i said sir give them a topic ask them to speak in telugu their mother tongue they would still struggle he looked at me surprised but he understood that the problem was not the language but the problem was their inability to think if you have ideas you will convey it in some language english tinglish or tenglish i want to quote a famous french philosopher rene descartes who said cogito ergo sum which means I think therefore I am in English. Now what does that mean? Our very existence is detected by our thinking. Thinkability that is the ability to think is human beings superpower. Your thinkability can give you success in your group discussion. But let me tell you you cannot think well if your GD if your knowledge base is not good enough. I want you to introspect today how much knowledge you have in your knowledge base and what you can do to improve it. Moving on to the next criteria it is initiation. Every group discussion has an initiator in it. Initiator is the one who starts the group discussion. Now initiator gets some points for starting the group discussion. beware initiation is high risk high return what do i mean to say is if you initiate well you will get that little bonus if you don't it will go against you so initiate only if you know the topic well and there are initiation techniques you don't have to start off normally in a usual way rather you can choose to tell a story or give an real life example give some facts and figures or a proverb or a quotation to start your group discussion this will grab the attention of all the group members and it will be a great start to your group discussion the second uh, sorry the third criteria that i'm talking about is conclusion just like initiation conclusion also has some points it is not necessary that the initiator should also be the concluder now how should you conclude a group discussion you should conclude by incorporating all the important points discussed by all the members in the group those students are told about this while they participate in a group discussion they tend to conclude by giving out just their own statements you should avoid doing so and say there is a situation where x concludes and then y concludes and after both of them z concludes who will get the points let me tell you you are not supposed to conclude after somebody in your group has already concluded there is no need of a second conclusion unless the first conclusion in the first conclusion there were some important points missing in such a case both these uh concluders will share the points moving on we have the next criteria that is listening skills if the first biggest rule of gd is speak i say the second biggest rule is listen listening helps you to participate actively in a group discussion if you want to summarize or conclude and get those bonus points you must first listen to all the points made by your group members 
and listening is your only rescue when you are participating in a group discussion where you know nothing about the topic. And then the key evaluation criteria that I am going to talk about next is non-verbal communication. As you all are aware, communication of all that is communicated, only 7 percent is uh, of meaning is communicated through words and 38 percent of the meaning of all that is communicate, communicated is conveyed through your tone or voice and 55 percent of the meaning is conveyed through your body language. While participating in a group discussion, you want to come across as a confident person. Now tell me how people around you will know that you are a confident person. Should you wear a badge here saying that I am confident? Will that work? No, right? Now what should you do? I tell you it is your non-verbal communication that will tell others whether you are a confident person or not a confident person. Let us first look at tone and voice. Volume of your uh, voice is the key. If you are a confident person, you will not mumble. If you are a confident person, you will not whisper. You will talk in a way that you are audible to everybody in the group. And also, there should be pitch variation. When you emphasize on those things that are important and those that are, uh, are not important, you just leave them, you will get this pitch variation. Let me show you on the board. This is how it seems. And if you don't show any pitch variation, it goes like this. This shows something else also, right? It shows you this one is the heartbeat of a live person and this is the heartbeat of somebody who is dead. So what will bring life into your presentation? What will make your presentation lively? It is the pitch variation. If you speak in the same tone, same level, same volume all the time, you will become a bore on the floor. Avoid high pitching because it is a sign of nervousness. Now let us move on to body language. Body language, everything, top to toe, everything is observed by the evaluators. Your posture, your stance also indicates your confidence. What is the right posture? If there is a straight line from your ear to hip, that is nothing but the right posture. What I mean to see is no droopy shoulders, no bent back, no head bending dome. You should always ensure that your shoulders are upright, your back is straight and your head held high. Now this is indication of confidence. Also avoid an American fo uh, four that is nothing but crossing your legs if you are sitting down. So I want to tell you one thing. You should know that group discussion is an everyday thing. If you are not practicing it every day, you will not be able to do it on the day of your presentation. Don't forget to smile. It is a super indicator of your confidence and it will make you look beautiful. It is not enough if you listen, show listening. How can you show listening? You can nod your head, you can lean forward, right? Now this will give you some brownie points. The another problem is speakers, many speakers don't know what to do with their hands. Boys normally slip them into their pockets while girls wriggle their hands, crack their knuckles or take a pen and do tic tac toe. Now this is negative body language. What can you do? You can replace it by gestures. Gestures are indicators of confidence. You can rehearse in a mirror and practice so that you will have a coordination between, between your speech and your hand movement. If you are still finding it difficult, let me give you a tip. Have a book and a pen in your hand if you are allowed to. It will make you look professional and also your hands are well managed. Next one is eye contact. Eye contact has to be, when you are speaking, it has to be with everybody. If you are a confident person, there is a spark or a twinkle in your eye. When you look and talk, as you speak, when you look and talk, you are talking with everyone. Don't select a person who is a good listener and just look at his face and keep talking. It is also not right to look at the person who is uh, organizing the GD, the facilitator. 
look at your co-participants. You are not doing the GD with your facilitator. And also when others are speaking, look at them. I am done speaking. Let me look here and there. Or I look at somebody else. No, this is not the right way. That shows it is lack of confidence and lack of interest. Moving on, another uh, key skill is communication skill. If you have good language skills, it is like cherry on the cake. Now, if you, if you want to have good communication skills, I'll tell you a simple formula. There is no, I there is no output without an input. Input is listening and reading. And output is writing and speaking. So you cannot expect an output without an input. Personality, the next evaluation criteria. Your dress says a lot about your grooming. Stick to formal dresses and have a cheerful, pleasant disposition that will make people feel your presence even after you leave the room. Then we have flexibility. Do not open the discussion with a stand. For example, yes, women make better managers. You can't say that. Because if you say that, you cannot talk about the good managerial skills of men. And also avoid statements like, I totally disagree with you. You can rather use statements like, I think, I understand what you say, but I think this is what it is. Another one is group dynamics. Along with your IQ, intelligent quotient, emotional quotient, your social quotient, how you get along well with your group is also checked on group discussion. Appreciate good points of other people and also agree politely with those you differ. And now the last one is leadership skills. It is a culmination of all. A leader evolves naturally by the end of the group discussion. And leadership skills are like all the qualities that I've been talking about right now, I mean, till now. And a person, a, uh, a leader will give direction to the group. He's not going to see, he's going to see that the, the uh, group will not go off the track. And he will also play the role of a moderator, controlling those who are talking a lot, taking chances, lot of chances, and those who are not topi uh, talking, encouraging them. And he's going to have a hold on entire uh, performance of the group. Now, these are do's and don'ts of uh, group discussion. Some do's, speak politely and pleasantly, agree with what is right, support your point with uh, some facts and figures and examples, make short contributions like 25 to 30 seconds for three, four times, because initiation is not just starting, uh, you talk in the starting and you're quiet rest of the time. Give others also a chance to speak. Don't modify. Now, these are the don'ts. Don't modify or change the topic. Don't interrupt others. You can intervene, but not interrupt. Intervening is when others are searching for words. You can just drop in there. But you cannot stop them while they are talking. Don't argue or shout. That shows lack of politeness. Don't mention wrong statistics. And that, uh, don't display low confidence with your negative body language. Don't try to be center of attraction all the time. You are, if you want to dominate, that is not the way a leader is evolving. Do not ridicule others' contribution by saying, oh, this is ridiculous. I never heard this. Don't put others in an embarrassing situation by asking them to speak if they are really not ready to speak. Now, here I put some online resources that will help your preparation. These are where GD's current GD topics are there. And also, you, have, you find them with solution. This will help you how to prepare for a GD. You can use them uh, to also see how other people are participating in a GD. You have many videos on the internet. Please use them as you prepare. Now let's do a quick recap. You have seen what is group discussion, how is it conducted, the types of group discussion, the ways to generate a group discussion, ideas, and then evaluation criteria of group discussion, the do's and don'ts of a group discussion, and how to take from online resources for group discussion preparation. Thank you very much. If you have any queries, uh, mail me at speak to Sheila at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you.